This is Larry Hayward, pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church in Alexandria. I know that many of you who follow these devotionals, whether early in the morning or sometime throughout the day or week, do so because you appreciate the connection with Westminster and are rightly reserved about returning to worship. I assume that some of you may remain reluctant to attend again, except on very special occasions or may not attend until every last remnant of this pandemic is long since passed. I respect your choice, and I'm sorry that because of health, you must be careful for a long time. But I can also tell you now that I've had my two vaccination shots and good weather has, has returned, I'm excited each Sunday as more and more people are returning to worship, slowly to be sure, cautiously, but surely. But this coming Sunday, Easter, we expanded the reservations from 40 to 70, and by Monday morning, they were all claimed. And believe me, given the vast emptiness of our sanctuary for so long, save for 10 or 15 people who've been attending throughout the winter, 70 this coming Sunday will feel like the 700 we have had year after year before COVID. But we can take refuge in the New Testament accounts in which the first Easter started slowly. A few disciples and women at the tomb two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, 10 disciples in the upper room one week, then Thomas joining them a week later to make 11. Other disciples having returned to fishing, working early in the morning and coming to realize that the stranger ahead who so helped their haul of fish was indeed Christ risen from the dead. It was a slow start this Easter thing, but it built over months, years, decades, centuries, millennia. And here we are far removed in time, but not far removed in space. As slowly we return to our own upper room and like Thomas, when the touch of Christ is offered, we don't necessarily take him up on it. Perhaps there were COVID restrictions in that day as well, but the offer of the presence of Christ is sufficient. My Lord and my God, Thomas explained, exclaimed, being there and seeing Christ offer him the chance to touch the wounds in his hands and his side were sufficient to rekindle the faith that had carried him through at least the last three years. I hope when you are able to return, you will not lament the time it will have taken for you to come back. And I hope that being back in the sanctuary, like the disciples being back in the upper room, seeing whatever portion of Christ you will see will be sufficient and healing and rejuvenating and touching and poignant and joyful for you to be able to say, my Lord and my God. Jesus blesses Thomas for seeing and believing, but then he blesses even more those who will come after who will believe without seeing. Whatever faith you have kept during this time of not seeing and being seen. And when you are able to return, you will bless us when we see you. Blessed are you for believing when you have not been seeing. Have a wonderful Easter.
Christ is risen. Amen.